Tomahawk Prime Rib. Let's smoke it. Prime rib is my absolute favorite thing to make at the holidays. We've made these before on our channel. We're gonna switch it up, go with a little different flavor profile today. But up top, let me tell you a little bit about what is a prime rib. So this is a 44 Farms prime grade rib roast. It does not have to be prime grade to be a prime rib. It's in how you prepare it, which is where the name comes from. So you can get a choice grade or whatever you want. What we have here today is a five bone tomahawk prime rib. So this is a rib roast that has been Frenched. Uh, if you cut this direction, you would have five individual ribeye steaks. But we're going to cook this whole and hence the name prime rib. There are a number of ways to prepare it and let me talk about the different types in that preparation. You can have a boneless prime rib, you can have a bone-in prime rib, or you can have a standing rib roast, which would be where you cut the meat off the bones so that you can season all the way around the meat and you butcher twine it back on and cook it whole. G big benefit in that, when you're done cooking it, you can cut the twine off, simply remove the roast and slice and go. That's a standing rib roast. Today, since we're going for the presentation with a tomahawk rib roast, we're going to leave this bone in and make it nice and simple. Um, this can apply, it's fall here, so here come the leaves. Uh, this method can apply to any type of rib roast. This is about the seasoning preparation and how to cook it. So this can apply to any type that you have. And the great thing in December, these usually go on sale and they're a lot more affordable, affordable than the rest of the year. Uh, so as you get near Christmas, which this is coming out, uh, after Thanksgiving, before Christmas, uh, this will be a lot more affordable for you guys to do. So let's jump into this. The one we did previously was super good. We slathered with the W sauce, seasoned with holy cow and garlic and herb, and it was amazing. Um, I love garlic and herb flavor profile, so we're gonna make a paste for this one with lots of herbs and even more garlic and our holy cow, so let's jump into that. Um, I've diced up a bunch of herbs already. So we've got flat leaf parsley, We've got rosemary, we've got tarragon, or tarragon as my friend Dennis Prescott calls it, and thyme, and then a whole lot of garlic. So they're half cups of all of them, uh, except the thyme, which is a quarter cup. And uh, it's actually a lot more garlic because I feel like I might want more um, than a quarter cup. So I did a bunch, so we'll see. And I've got just a little bit of olive oil. So we're gonna let's just combine all this stuff together. This some. And I'm also gonna mix in a little Dijon mustard to help bind it all together. I love slathering beef with mustards. Uh, it doesn't affect the flavor profile that much, a little bit. And with the oil. And I'm not gonna put all the garlic in first. I'm gonna see if I wanna add some more, put quite a bit of it in. And then you need three, four tablespoons of mustard, so just Dijon mustard. You could also use English mustard. I'm not gonna measure this, we're just gonna put it in and kind of get it to the consistency I want. And I'd go two, three tablespoons of our beef rub, which is holy cow. Measure with your heart. All right, let's see how this looks. Needs more mustard. This recipe is gonna be down in the description. They can always be found at meatchurch.com. If you don't know, we release videos typically every Wednesday and the banner of meatchurch.com will be that recipe uh, with links in it to the YouTube video. So here's what we're looking for. Just nice kind of even consistency. This is a big roast by the way. So we may need a little more paste. Most people don't make a five, six, seven or bone, uh, bone prime rib. Most people make, you know, I'm going a little more mustard. They usually make three or four bone. This one is, uh, this one's pretty big, which I love. 44 Farms hooked us up with a gorgeous rib roast. So if you don't know 44, down in Cameron, Texas, never ever product, so no hormones or antibiotics. Amazing beef. I'm all about knowing what your family, uh, which, where your beef comes from that your family eats, and this stuff is great. You guys have seen it on this channel before, so thank you all for sending this up. 
for this video. I'm putting gloves on just because I'm going to get messy. You could obviously just do this with your hands. So we put seasoning in this. You could season the rib roast, uh, but if you put enough in here, you don't have to do that. And then we're basically going to just slather. I'm going to start on the back side. And I wanted a lot of garlic, as I mentioned. I want to be able to see it. I want that like studded look of garlic all over this thing. I feel like I got a pretty good amount, actually. I don't use it all. Remember, big piece of meat. So if you weren't going with this paste and you were just seasoning, you can season very heavily because you slice this direction, you have this massive piece of meat and you only have seasoning on the outside of it. So it's very difficult to, uh, to hurt this or to, you know, to put too much on it. All right, that looks pretty good. We're gonna let this adhere. I'm gonna let it adhere for probably about an hour. It's nice and cool out. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. Uh, you know, you could do this the night before if you want. It's not gonna hurt it. If you want to do this uh, the evening before your big cook is fine. But I'd let it sit, you know, one to three, four, five hours. Put it in your fridge, but it's nice and cool out. So we're gonna leave this out here. Let this kind of soak in a little bit. And I'm gonna get my smoker going at 250 degrees and I'll see y'all back in a little bit. Let's talk about the cook on this. It's gonna be very, very simple. We're running a mill scale offset smoker, 250 degrees with post oak. You could cook this on anything. You could cook it on a pellet grill. You could cook it on a Kamado grill with an indirect setup. Uh, you could cook it in your oven, but that's not any fun. We cook everything outside. Temperature wise, you also don't have to be at 250. You can be a little lower, you can be a little higher. So let's put this in. Not sure how long this one's gonna take. It's a big one. So we're not gonna baste it or do anything to it. I am going to face uh, these, the meat towards the fire, right in the middle, so that it cooks nice and even. So we're gonna cook this today and we will let you guys know how long it takes and we'll be back. We're shooting for about 120 internal temperatures. So when we get there, we'll be back to hang with you guys then. All right, it's been right at three and a half hours, actually three hours and 27 minutes. I've done nothing to this prime rib other than just run the fire. It's mostly been 250, a little above, a little below. I'd say we did a pretty good job at 250. It's 248 right now. Right in the middle. Bam, 120. Not good. She's done. <laughs> Looks so good. So I told you we were going to 120. Why is that? Well, when I'm cooking a steak, I like medium rare, 130, 135. Uh, Mrs. Meat Church likes it more medium, so 140 or over. When it comes to prime rib, I always go a little bit under. This is a really big piece of meat. It's going to continue to carry over cook now. Uh, for a little bit. So that's why I go to 120. So you need to adjust this final internal temperature to your desired doneness. Also, it's 120 right in the middle. So I know that I'll eat what's right in the middle, but my wife and others in the family that like it more well done, not well done, but more, more done than medium rare. If you want it well done, unsubscribe because you do it wrong. Kidding. Uh, it's, you know, out here on the edge is going to be a much higher temperature uh, so we can serve out here. So I'm 133 right here. So this will rise up a few more degrees. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tint it with foil and we're gonna let it rest for a while. It will continue to increase in temperature as I said. Thanks Rosewood, uh, Rosewood Block for these amazing beautiful little trivets to hold down my foil. Just gonna let this hang out here we're gonna let it rest at least 20 minutes. Uh, you could go longer if you want. So I'll see y'all back here. We'll slice it open and see how we did. All right, guys, can't wait any longer. To see how we did. It's been 20 minutes. Looks awesome, by the way. I mean, 
killer bark. Uh, the contrast is going to be amazing. So I love the way it looks, to be super honest with you all. Okay, here we go. There's the money shot. Man, it only got up to 126, by the way, and as you let it sit here, it's gonna get uh, it's gonna get more pink. But man, let me tell you how this garlic smells. Not bad. Okay, I gotta get in here and get me a little piece of this. Get an awkward slice here. get some uh, I need to get some of the, the edge on that good lord I mean look at the juice just dripping off more tender than your mother's love as I always say I got asked a question on YouTube last week why a prime rib why wouldn't you just cut steaks well the texture is completely different when you cook something like this and going back to the days of going to Vegas and hitting the prime rib buffet for $5.99, I ain't mad at it. That's super good. Love the garlic and herb, um, all that garlic. I'm not mad at putting all that garlic on there. That was, that was awesome. This is easy. You guys gotta try this uh, for sure. We've got all kinds of holiday videos, by the way. This will be in our holiday playlist. So there's like 20 something holiday videos, everything from turkey to next week we've got a brand new beef tenderloin video coming out uh, lots of cool stuff in there no matter what it is that you're cooking for your family for the holidays so please like and subscribe we drop weekly how to cooking videos uh, to inspire you guys to get outside and to cook for your family cheers y'all see you next time